Welcome back to Sekiro. Today we're heading up into the Ashina Castle. And then we're going to be taking a bit of a diversion. First reminder, just bum rush this guy. This guy's died so many times. Poor fella. There is a way you can sneak around this place. You're not just crawling up on these walls. There's actually a side path you can grapple over to. Damn dogs. Can you jump and do a death from above kill on dogs? No, they're too tall. Ah. Yeah, they're fucking gargantuan, are you kidding me? Compared to the lizards, I guess. I'm one of you. Bark, bark. Well, I assume since the barking stopped that they got him and are now uh, just chilling out. Feels like there's supposed to be a conversation between these two guards, but they don't say anything. They're in love, Thorn. They don't need to talk. They just look. That's the side path you can take. Side path of love. <laughs> there is no love on the side path. Make it! Okay. This game is making me want to play a lot of different games. The general atmosphere is reminding me of Horizon Zero Dawn. Huh? Where? What is this figure that appears to be moving in front of my eyeballs? Oh, there's another guy. There is another side path I can use to bypass this guy. But this is more fun. Hey, he's a chump. Oh, I thought you would just roll all the way down the <laughs> stairs. It'd be great if they implemented that. I'm looking around for it. I actually just walked right past it. Nothing up here. That's where the Senpo assassins are. But keep your eye on the right wall. There it is. Oh, failed the jump. Then I failed the grab. Oh, what a nice little room. Now, from up here, I can survey a little bit of an arena. There's just a couple Taro troops and some guards here. One thing you can do, you can hang down onto a ledge and then drop down onto one of them. That does grab everyone's attention, though. It's not like you landed on him and his head was made of hollow metal. Like, dang! That was just a sound effect, though. Oh, lordy. Oh, man. I am just barely missing every hit from this guy. That clipped you. That bonging actually was just him hitting the ground with his hammer. I, yeah, don't try to jump around that. Scratch your butt. It's itchy. Can't fight with an itchy ass. I think Sun Tzu said that. <laughs> I scouted around the area. I couldn't find anything. There was one little tower with stuff, though. I might have bypassed it. Yes, but it's fucking weird. They're talking about the next mini boss. It is weird. Can't wait. I hope it's a giant, like, cylinder. Kinda, actually. Oh my god. I want to judge on whether the kinda is kinda enough. 
Oh, look at that. That's the arena where we fought Genichiro. Ooh. We're right nearby the outskirts. God, cool. I love shit like that. There's one thing that the Soulsborne games do really well, at least when Miyazaki directs them, is that you can see everything that's going to be in the game from a distance. In fact, if we looked around, we would see a mountain covered in sakura trees, all in full blossom. That is a later location. That is actually the Senpo Temple. The Senpo Tempo? Senpo Tempo. Yeah, these games are very good at having an interconnected, not really an open world, but an interconnected one that feels extremely natural. Oh, yeah. Now, the boss is in that little hut. I want to take care of the enemies first. It's a little difficult to do that when I keep hitting the fence. Ugh, I'm really bad at hitting people, but I can really hit a log like no one's business. Is this the cylinder you're talking about? Well, it's like two cylinders. Yeah, it's, well, he's got a cylinder for horns. The Blazing Bull is another kind of rough boss. When he hits you with his fiery horns, that does do fire buildup damage. How I found the best way to deal with this guy is to always just be on his ass. Just keep running up to him. He's always going to be turning around and aiming at you to try to hit you. But if you run around him, he'll only be able to keep turning. He won't be able to actually hit you. Apparently, one of the best things you can do to stun him is to hit him directly head on in the face. I'm never able to do that, so I don't even try. <laughs> No, I, I did kind of underplay how fucking cool this boss is. He is pretty tight. And I was just like, oh, is this the cylinder guy? Whatever. Luckily, you only need to death blow him once. That was half of my health in one hit. It's very odd to have a posture meter for someone with such, like, bad posture like this guy. <laughs> In other words, it's weird to have a posture meter for an animal. Yeah, exactly. Especially one that goes, like, down so slowly. Like, when you hit him, it's just like, eh. It's like stumbling when walking just a little bit. Whatever. Or, like, slap, even, like, slouching when sitting. It's about, that's the equivalent of how much you've been able to hurt him. And a reminder, he is a beast, so the firecrackers will both spook him and do posture damage. There we go. There, that stunned him a little. I must have hit him in the face then. God, this is chaotic. Yeah, it's stressing me out a little bit. In fact, the unpredictable nature would mean I am particularly bad at this one. When he gets low, he does this, then smacks his head into the wall. Oh! He pretty much just gives you the kill. Sleep. Great, I'm covered in ox blood. I was covered in snake blood just 20 minutes ago. That's more badass, I think. Now, I didn't hear the dialogue, but those guys actually do say, Hey, it's gone quiet. Did he kill him? Wait, the shinobi's still alive? I'm going to assume that this is like Dark Souls, where the big, the like mini bosses and bosses don't respawn when you die. Correct. Good. It would, be, it would suck to like fight that guy. It's like, woo, I did it. Then to die to one of these dudes and have to do it again. Heard of it. I looked at it a little bit. <gasps> he 
always gazed upon it. This is actually a cue to do something here. It doesn't look like it. But actually, you want to pop the Mibu balloons next to her. That's not what I'd call Wolf's temperament. Lukewarm at most. I just realized she was just hanging out next to a couple of enemies. What, what did she do to have them let her in here and pray peacefully? <laughs> like a new guy on the job. Who's that? Don't worry about her. She just she sits here and prays forever. She, she's not hurting anybody. I don't think she can hurt anybody. You only need to do this three times. If you do it a fourth time, you don't get anything. I'm glad they indicate that with the lastly, otherwise I'd be here forever. Yeah, but it's useful to pop those balloons and get the divine confetti. Especially with the one I wasted. I forgot to mention it, along with the divine confetti affecting ethereal enemies, demons, and what have you, it is also just a straight damage buff. You can reach a point in the game where you can buy divine confetti. By that point, you can just use it as is, and it'll make the game faster. Why does this suck so much? I have the settings at max. I think it's just the focus. Shit. Take it back to the store. Pink ogre of a man. Uh, I wish I haven't been called that. <laughs> But Kuro, you can cause an avalanche. There's not that much snow. Well, I've been told. <laughs> I guess I'll vanish. That's our boy. Did you know it happened? Can you hear the whistle? Well, I can't. That means I can just go do whatever I want, I guess. Opening this door, we can open the back door as well. It's not really necessary. But down there is the way to the Ashina Reservoir. And that's where we're going to be heading. More extra stuff. Down in the moat is a spirit emblem. Just kind of floating there. Don't really need it right now. Can I make this? Yes, I can. Yes. This takes me somewhere else, not to the reservoir. But there is a sculptor right all over here, so I'm gonna get that. And also, there's a very important piece of information and something that one of these guards drops when you come over here. So they're talking about some of the armored enemies. There's a Taro troop with some very ill-fitting armor. One of these guys drops an item. I'm going to quickly get it off them. The gatehouse key. I want to grab this before I go down into the reservoir because one of the houses down there is locked. We open this and then we get a weapon, another shinobi prosthetic tool that will allow us to remove that armor from the Taro troop. We 
can actually see the reservoir right from up here. This was the bridge that we crawled under. This is the first time we've been up top. Aw, he's making friends. Oh. That's a new Taro Troop. He's got a big-ass bell, and he'll just swing it around and wreck you. Oh, this guy can really ring your bell. <laughs> no, I guess he can. New upgrade material. If it's scrap anything, it's just for upgrades. Scrap magnemite. Oh, wait. Oh, he killed my buddies. Wagon. <laughs> Fuck your supplies. Fuck your jars. Fuck your box? No. Fuck your idol. Wait, no. Anything I can grab right now. I want to grab that. That allows me to recover health from a death blow. Very necessary. And another memorial mob. This guy sells some pretty useful stuff. <laughs> Every time he's like, another one. <laughs> How many of you are there? It is memorial mob. There's multiples of them. So he sells another piece of that mask. Ooh. And a prayer bead. A lot of stuff we kind of need. Well, two things, but that counts as a lot in my book. I don't have enough right now. So we'll come back to him. That path leads out to the abandoned dungeon. Which itself leads out to another area. But like I said, heading down into the reservoir. You'll survive this jump. We've survived jumps about three times that height, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wolf must have micro fissured the fuck out of his legs. Another one. They're all over. They do seem a lot more common than in Dark Souls. I greatly appreciate that. It's actually very easy to clear these guys out. Just shirk in one of the dogs, and then shirk in the other one, and they'll be so distracted that they won't even hear you run up to them. One. And yeah, two. Wow. God. I don't understand the logic behind the way these people act. I, oh shit, my dog got hit by something that's clearly coming from behind us. What the fuck do I do? It's not great enemy AI. Nah. There's a few gunners around here. Want to kill them quickly. I could just actually grapple onto a tree to my left and bypass everyone. This makes it a little easier. There's two Taro troops right ahead of me. There's another sniper right over there. But I can't hit him from here. Oh, uh, he looks so relaxed. You want to move quietly, because there's another one of the frogmen right here. Ooh. 
least I'm pretty sure I hear them saying ghetto ghetto. What did it say last time I saw them? They look like the sniper from Call of Duty 4 online, but if they just never picked him up from the war and he went crazy. <laughs> A reward is Gilbu's horn. It's just a piece broken off from a spear. We attach that to our prosthetic. We can drive it into enemies, and it does some damage, but there are some armored enemies where if you do the attack and press the button again, you'll pull the spear back and rip their armor off. And there's one boss that takes that idea in a completely different direction. You don't actually use it for the way it says on the tin. Look forward to that. It's a hell of a boss on its own. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm bringing that with me. My lucky stick. This place should look familiar now. This is where we were at the start of the game. Oh uh, yeah, I do recognize this. We weren't armed at the time, but now we are. It's easier to hide from these guys. Just duck into the grass and go under the gatehouse. This isn't a bad grinding spot, because we got the two Taro troops. They drop a lot of money and experience. A lot of money for this point of the game, at least. Now, there is a guy to the right of the Taro troop, but he never really turns around, <laughs> so you can just run up to this guy and backstab him. There he is. He just stares at the corner. It's like he's in timeout. Yeah, what the fuck is his use? I'll go around and clear it up. Up in the tower where Kuro was held at the beginning, there is another mini boss. Got another one. Another one. You can see him standing guard. Yeah. You want to go down into stealth and sneak around him. Go around the right, because he's going to walk down the stairs. This is a really easy boss to backstab, but actually fighting him is quite difficult. Well, yeah, he's got a lance the size of fucking Timbuktu. He's one of the seven Ashina Spears. There's only two of them left alive, and we're gonna kill both of them. But he is relentless. He does a lot of damage. He also does a lot of thrusts, so there's a lot of chances to Makiri. However, his timing is weird, so good luck getting it. Oh! oh. <laughs> you know what I was thinking. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Oh, this attack reminded me too much of the Bell Gargoyle. I hate him. Jeez, he pushes you back far. He has a big wind-up is his problem. When he does that big wind-up and he steps back, there's a chance that he's going to do a follow-up attack. Like right there. If you deflect that, you can get some free hits in. Do not fall off a cliff. I don't think he ever did the follow-up attack I was thinking of. One of his other follow-up attacks, he'll drag his spear along the ground. Whoa! Like that? No, that's a different one. These bosses have me so entranced. Like, I'm just focusing so much. Like, watching a video game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got good news for you. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. Wait, we were here. Do we need a vision of this? 
This is one of the memories I actually remember. This happened like last week. I like this little continuity. Because the first time that he actually met Kuro in person, that was what he said. And we saw it happen. It was at a Hirata estate. Wolf, I really wish you'd stop destroying all my boxes. It's not his house. It was his cell. Oh. Well, then go crazy. <laughs> now, remember what I said back at the Hirata estate? Be sure to look around, because there's stuff on the roofs. A baby. Oh, that was weird. Um, oh, yeah. The game doesn't like it when you grab edges from behind. Or at least the camera doesn't. And seeing things in the distance makes me want a From Software game where you can fly. Yeah. Breath of the Souls. Breath of the Souls. It's one more way that they can make me hate life. Oh, more assassins. Oh, hey, son. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? And I, I think that was one down there. Just hiding in a pit. Yeah. I love it. I've been waiting to die. We cannot head back to the battlefield, though. What a shame. I don't know why, but I just want to. Can I death blow this guy from here? Yes, I can! I believe in you! Sweet! I really love death from above attacks. Like, Doom does the same thing. And it's so much fun to just drop in on people. There's actually a lot of information here that's actually important. So, Balloon of Spirit, that increases the amount of spirit emblems we can find like when we get it from enemies. And it mentions that when someone dies, a red and white pinwheel is offered in remembrance. Presumably at Senpo Temple, which is where a lot of this stuff comes from. That's actually very important. The red and white pinwheel information. Oh. Oh, great. Uh, Ooh, I made it. Close. Now, I promised you, Jacob, a third mini-boss. You did. Don't go back on your word. We gotta go find him first. I'm waiting. I reset the area. And Bug it. Can I rest? Just made it. <laughs> I wanted to be back at max first. I think I did a bit of grinding so I'd be able to buy the gourd seed. Goku. Goku, my hero. She's just enough to use the send bags. Yes, yeah, send bags, not coin purse. Goku. Okay. Okay. Sheesh. <laughs> if you do it fast enough, he says sheesh. Sheesh. Damn it, I'm just washing my pan. My pants. <laughs> Let's head back to the hole where Wolf was. We got a new samurai friend hanging out. He's had too much to drink, I think. Yo. おい。よ。誰ですか、俺。おい。もう一度聞かせてくれ。お主。はい。わしは熊野人材門と申す。堀を。はい、人材門。Quite a bit involves Jinzaimon. He is. He's got kind of his own arc. 
And the fact that he is huge is actually necessary. That's important information. Is he like eight feet tall or are you just kind of short? He's pretty tall. We decidedly have not. It was not me. I don't believe you. So de gozaruka. I think he says de gozaru. That's a very old way of closing out a sentence in Japan. Man, he is horny for that shamisen. My sword is in my pocket. I am not happy to see you. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> So, if we head up and look at the hole where Emma first dropped that note at the beginning of the game, there's a mini-boss waiting where we were lying. Sounds like you could easily get the drop on him. You could. But you won't. I won't at first. And if I don't do it here, I will do it in New Game Plus. But if you sneak down here, he has a bit of dialogue. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> おらんよだな。無能ゆえ破れ。生き恥を晒す忍びなど一度見てみたかったが、ぜひもないか。聞く edgelord deck. You found me. All right, the lone shadows, they're basically an anta version of that shinobi we fought at the pagoda. Now oh, great. They're even stronger, and now they're mini-bosses. You mean the one you didn't kill? The one I couldn't kill. Alright, best of luck with this guy. I do get a lot better at fighting these guys as the LP goes on, because it is a recurring mini-boss, unfortunately. My problem is, again, I'm stuck on that crutch of pumping the block. What I need to do is I need to get the timing down. You need to pay attention to when his sword and his kicks connect with me. That's the only way you're going to get his posture down. It doesn't help. It's such a confined space that I'm losing the camera a lot. Yeah, this camera's pissing me off a little bit. But this is a good opportunity for me to show off Ichimonji. There's a few attacks in particular I want to pay attention to. Most of them kicks. Because those feel like the easiest to deflect. Or if you can dodge them, they leave him pretty open to attacks. took a lot of... yeah. That's the Ichimonji I missed. Great. There we go, that did a bit of posture damage. God damn it. Dude, come on. <laughs> Get your head in the game, man. Hit it next time, I believe in you. Now that kick right there, we couldn't really see it with a camera angle. Ah, uh, he reduced his posture. Um, but when he revs up a kick, that counts as a thrust attack, and you can Makiri counter it. Oh. 
Fuck you. Uh, round two. Oh god, yeah. Is that really necessary? Eh. Until you're getting a handle on him, no. All the practice I did just getting the first death blow paid off, though. Almost got him to full. Remember, this is the opposite of Dark Souls, where if you held your shield up, your stamina would recover slowly. In this, you need to hold your block up to reduce your posture. Uh oh. I keep jumping in the wrong direction. I was getting kind of exhausted by this point. Yeah, this is a long one, Jesus. That is my fault. I was just fighting him badly. Oh, okay. But he is tough either way. I believe it. He looks like a bastard and a half stirred. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell I didn't think of that joke until I was already done with the set, so I had to save it. <laughs> Got more lizards. This is a very breezy cave. Just roaring at us. Oh, fuck you, dude. Those lizards are adorable. Look at them. Yeah. At least they look like actual lizards and not the basilisks. Yeah. Look at that. That's a thousand sen. A bulging coin purse. Looks like an icon for a microtransaction store. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to end it here in the breezy ass cave. You could actually see right behind us, Jin Zaimon managed to bypass us somehow. Ah, oh, great. So we'll be talking to him next time. What a queek boy. So yeah, I, def I definitely sympathize with the people who are so exhausted and pissed off with the difficulty when the game came out. The barrier of entry for this is probably the strongest out of all the Soulsborne games yet, because there is one particular way the game wants you to play, and if you have your muscle memory stuck back in Dark Souls, you're going to have a lot of trouble doing it. It's interesting, because on the surface, it looks more like a standard action game than the other Soulsborne's games. It almost looks more like a Devil May Cry, Bayonetta-type deal. But I, I mean, it obviously isn't, but it looks more like one, so you would think that it'd be a little bit more forgiving to new players. That is a good point, though. This game was originally envisioned as a new entry in the Tenchu series. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Over time, it developed into its own thing. But yeah, I kind of see that. It's kind of like how Bloodborne, in comparison to Dark Souls, was more Devil May Cry, because the action was a lot faster. It wanted you to be more aggressive. This one's even more so, because you could jump around and do combos and stuff. All that being said, once you do get a grip down on the deflecting and blocking, and you get really good at that, the game doesn't necessarily become a breeze, but it becomes really fun. Like, if you complete a first run, you've got a handle on it. Going into New Game Plus and rushing through the game is a really good time. That's kind of why I consider this my favorite out of all the Soulsborns, but only after the first run. <laughs> right. Because during it, it was not. Ugh, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm still gonna have to pick up this game if, like, it's probably gonna be a long time from now, when it's, like, down to, like, 20 bucks or something. Well, you have the advantage in that you're watching the LP, you're seeing me explain everything. I didn't have that. I got the game when it came out. I had to learn by hand. True, true. And that's the good thing about games like this, is there, there's so much games. There's, like, the only things that are spoiled, really, are gameplay moments. You can absolutely still watch an LP and play the game and get your own experience. Like, right now I'm playing Fire Emblem Three Houses. Fucking love it. But if I watched an LP of it, I would be getting a very... Of course, you, you could have your own experience, but... Watching an LP kind of takes away from that. It's very different from with from software games since they're so just just video games, you know, very classic <laughs> in that way. Well, in the case of three houses, you have three houses you could choose, and people are always talking about doing multiple playthroughs of that. True, and that's the thing. CJ just started playing, 
and they're playing through that house I wanted to play next. So part of me doesn't want to watch what I still do, <laughs> you know? Well, we live in like a very spoiler averse pop culture right now, but I'm always hearing at the same time, the enjoyment of a game, a movie or what have you is actually enhanced when you know the spoilers already. I think it varies by person I, and and varies greatly by the type of medium, because I did see that if spoiling the twist ruins the movie, it probably wasn't that great of a movie. I understand that, but I want to experience each beat of the story like bit by bit. Like I just experienced a big twist in Fire Emblem Three Houses. But if I learned if I already knew that, I'd be upset and it, the impact would have been a lot less to me once that moment happened. Sure, I feel like you're allowed to have the first experience not knowing, but you should consider having the second experience of knowing and seeing what's changed. Yeah, but oh, I think I just thought of a decent way that, that describes this game versus others. I'm watching Sekiro, and I'm like, I want to do this myself and see how I do it. If it's something else where, like, having the game spoiled before playing is less fun, it's like, okay, I watched this, now I don't want to do it, you know? Yeah. There have been a few cases where that's happened for me. Yeah. Can't think of which. Me neither. Which is our cue to end it. Bye bye see you in the next episode. Next time we explore the abandoned dungeon and, speaking of difficulty, fight another really tough mini-boss. Oh boy!